Hey guys, welcome to Ringsiders. We have a very special guest. He is Oleg Prudius, formerly known as Vladimir Kozlov. How are you doing? Excellent, guys. I'm Thank glad. You for joining. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm glad we have this yeah. conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm based in Miami right now, Miami, Florida. Oh, Miami. Very oh, wow. nice. Yeah. I, I, and, I went uh, to. I... Yeah, wait, I've wait. been there before. I've been to South Beach. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, I'm like uh, 20, 25 minutes away up north. Wow. It's beautiful. It's a nice area. I, I moved to Miami when I stopped to wrestle. Hey, you, you're living the life. I mean, I've, we've all seen your Instagram. It looks like you're living the life right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very, man. very jealous. Yeah. We are living, we're living vicariously through your Instagram. It's, uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But I'm, you, you may obviously before we go and like moving on what you're doing now, obviously we'll touch a bit on WWE as well because we were huge fans. I mean, when you first came in, you was on uh, an undefeated streak. You was unstoppable. I mean, what was that like when you first came in? Oh, uh, I was so impressed from WWE, from a uh, show, from uh, everything they organized. I was a little bit shocked because when you first time perform up front of 20, 30,000 people, it, uh, you have to be very confident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to. <laughs> it's not easy. No, I mean, obviously, you from the start as well. I mean, you was in there with guys like Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn yeah. Michaels. I mean, you were thrown in pretty much at the deep end. Was that was that a great learning curve for you straight off the bat? No, when I started, yeah, because when I started to wrestle, I was a big guy. When I just joined WWE and I signed the development deal, I was almost like 340 pounds, uh, 350 pounds because I used to compete for. Uh, because uh, yeah, I was like a uh, heavyweight, you say, open world samba champion, and yeah. I was in the heavyweight division. And when I signed deal with WWE, uh, I went to 325 pounds. I felt like it's better for wrestling if you move faster and uh, yeah. Yeah. better for your condition. When the, when I did uh, my debut, I was 315 20 pounds after I lost weight again. Mm. But I was a powerhouse, so you need to care big guys. To be, you have to be big to care big guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I because mean, they're taking Triple H big guys. And they are. They're Triple very H big like guys. Two hundred eighty pounds, pure muscles, and the same like an Undertaker, three hundred yeah. pounds. Yeah, you need to have power to wrestle with those guys. I remember you debuting yeah. on SmackDown uh, back in two thousand and eight, and. I remember even then you had this presence about you because you didn't come out with any entrance music or any entrance video. You just came out to silence and darkness. And I remember thinking how intimidating you looked. So how, how do you think your debut went? Do you feel like you got a good reaction from the crowd? I, I feel like I got a good reaction because it was unusual. It, like you said, it wasn't the entrance. It was just dark, no lights, nothing. And all my matches was very vicious, intense, because I'm, I was trying to uh, combine uh, samba, judo, jiu-jitsu, pro wrestle, everything together. So uh, it took a little bit uh, time to develop uh, my style. Yeah. Yeah, did you... But at the same, ta the same time, you have to be very careful because you cannot injure wrestlers. It's very important. Coming from a, a samba background, like you said, you're a samba champion. Um, did you did you fall in love with pro wrestling when you started doing it? Like, did you really enjoy that that switch into doing pro wrestling? Don't, don't know for myself. It was an easy transition, but at the same time, uh, all troll takedowns technique and submission was a little bit different mm. uh, you have to adjust because you cannot injure people because. but it helped a lot even it's right now when i'm doing my movies i'm using all these skills from uh, samba from judo from jiu-jitsu mm. from pro wrestle try to wrap everything uh, unique hey yeah i mean like we said you, you you after you've gone from wwe you've gone into doing so many different things like, you, you know, you've been doing stunt work, which I'm sure pro wrestling has helped with too. 
and you know it does, it does yeah, a lot. I can imagine it does. Like uh, being a stuntman is basically being a wrestler, right? You're doing stunts where you're not trying to hurt yourself, but you need it to look realistic as well. Yeah, it's a, do you know what? It's almost the same, and the uh, difference is. On the movie set, you're supposed to be do your, your stunt maybe six, eight hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be in good condition. And plus, like you said, stunt, it's like you have to fall on the ground. It's, it's, it's not easy. No. But uh, wrestling helps a lot because you can carry your body. And plus, I'm still a big guy. I'm 25 to 90 pounds. Yeah. Well, we were saying that as well. I was looking at your Instagram. I mean, you're in... Quite, I mean, you'll probably say yourself, you're in maybe the best shape you've been in. I mean, you look absolutely jacked, man. Yes, it does. It does. It took me like three, four months when I stopped to wrestle and I've uh, been out from uh, road trips. I spent more time for conditioning, mm. for training, for diet. It took me like three, four months to get lean, but keep the same weight. So... I got uh, I I got like two three percent of body fat, but weight was almost the same, like two hundred eighty five pounds, because you have to be look good on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> big competition, big competition. <laughs> In WWE, it's big competition, and movie industry, it's big competition too. Everybody wants to be <laughs> star. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, talking quickly about WWE again as well, I mean, we mentioned earlier, obviously, The Undertaker. I mean, you defeated The Undertaker clean. I mean, what was that like when you were told you're going to beat The Undertaker? I was shocked, to be honest. Mm. He's a legend and uh, I beat Undertaker, I was shocked. It was one of the biggest moments in my wrestling career. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was big. Yeah, I mean, that you beat The Undertaker, I believe, to be added to uh, a match with Triple H for the WWE Championship. So that, that's a huge achievement, too. In your first few months of being in WWE, you'd not only beaten The Undertaker, gone on an undefeated streak, you were now facing Triple H, the top guy in the business for the WWE Championship. What was the pressure like for you? Did you feel like you were up for the challenge? Because watching it as a fan, I think... I'd have liked to have seen you beat Triple H for the championship. How did how did you feel? Oh, it was very good run. This uh, yeah, because we stay on the program almost like I think maybe like in a year, but it was we, every night we had a main event. We rest for like 20, 25, 30 minutes, and uh, you're supposed to be in good condition too because uh, I was a powerhouse. Mm. You're, supp- you're supposed to be make like 20, 30 different uh, suplexes, uh, different uh, big moves. Yeah, it was a little bit exhausted, but uh, it's still big because yeah. he's a, he is a champion and uh, compete against champion, it's like a big uh, responsibility, you know, because all world watching you. So yeah, you have to be confident. And you, you need to have big balls. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, you have to be very gentle. Don't yeah. curve. <laughs> yeah, you need to be, yeah, you have to, you have to be very smart. <laughs> well, I think I can speak on behalf of Callum as well. Before we move on, we've got to ask you as well about Santino Morella because oh. that was one of our highlights. It was one of the the highlights every week watching you and Santino. What was it like for you working with Santino? Was it as much fun as it looked? No, it was fun. Santino was a friend of mine since uh, OVW. Uh, When I signed deal, I went to Deep South. I spent on Deep South, I think like seven, eight months. I don't remember exactly. And after uh, I get transferred to Louisville, Kentucky, OVW. So first time I met Santino and OVW, and we become friends right away. And we wrestled together. His, uh, basically, we did some talk together. His name was Boris. <laughs> it's also, yeah, Boris it's also Russian Yeah, yeah that's Boris. it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah, that. He was, he, was yeah, a... he, was, he was judo champion. That's yeah, right, yeah. He was yeah. judo champion from Canada. So he was really serious. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he was badass. 
Don't yeah. know what I'm telling you. He is badass in real life because he is a judo national Canada champion. So we try yeah. to create like a Russian MMA unstoppable tag team. I, I it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't happen, but I'm sure <laughs> we did another stuff. <laughs> There was this video for Santino when he was in OVW, when he was a uh, Alexa Beeve, uh, you know, and they're, they're showing this like he's doing all this serious punching, showing off his moves and everything. He was more like Taz, uh, you know, he was doing all these suplexes and really, really serious. And then when he debuted as Santino Morella, I was like, is this the same guy? Like, <laughs> what? But it, it yes, shows how good I he is. I don't know how he made this transition. I'm still <laughs> surprised. <laughs> but in real, life, in real life, he's a funny guy. He's a good yeah. friend of mine. <laughs> he's my brother. <laughs> yeah, they, they were a highlight for me and Callum. We, I was at a show in Manchester, UK. I think you were Santino over there. I'm sure it was a t you had a tea party in the ring, I think, maybe. Um, oh, yes, it was yeah, party, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was there. That was just hilarious. I, I loved every bit of it. Um, but you mentioned other as well, like MMA background and things like that. I, I did see a while ago an interview where you wanted to face Brock Lesnar, but if you ever went back to UFC, is UFC no, uh, something to still consider? Uh, I'm telling you this one. When I was in New York, I had an interview for Fox uh, Sport, and it was a question if I will have opportunity to fight uh, Brock Lesnar, if I will do it, if I'm, if I'm not. Uh, it was a rumor for a long time, if I can uh, fight against Brock Lesnar. Mm. It can be very interesting. It's, uh, it was conversation during uh, my wrestling career, and uh, since I stopped to wrestle, MMA style. Mm. But if you have opportunity in the future like that, you have to just concentrate on this specific fight because it's, you know, he's a big guy and he is very powerful and he is uh, in good shape too. So you have to give up all your production, you have to give up all your acting career, you need to just concentrate. But it can be interesting. I like challenges. <laughs> yeah, that would be a hell of a match. <laughs> <laughs> I like challenges. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like competition. It's, I th sometimes uh, it frees your mind. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think you'd take him. I don't know about you, Callum. But... I really think if anyone's going to, it's likely to be yourself. I mean... We've seen him against smaller guys, and they've done all right. But I feel like you have to be powerful, or more powerful than Brock Lesnar to stand a chance. And you're what six seven, six foot seven, six foot eight. I, I, yeah, feel, so I feel like you've yeah. got a good chance. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's everybody has a chance. <laughs> I, I don't think I've got a chance against Brock Lesnar. You know? I don't think everybody's got a chance. <laughs> you have to be confident. You have to be in good shape. You have to create your technique and uh, some knowledge. Mm. Yeah. I have, well, a, I, have a, I have a background. Plus, uh, I play rugby, football, and yeah. fight, wrestle. So, I, I can move around. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Um we had a friend of ours who I spoke to last night called uh, Immy, and he said he, want, he was. He said to ask us, I mean, how was it transitioning from wrestling to acting? Was it was it easy because of the wrestling background, or was it difficult? No, in myself, it was very helpful because mm -hmm. uh, I feel very comfortable on the set. I can uh, follow cameras, I can perform, and uh, plus. It's a uh, wrestling, mostly the time it's live, but in a movie you can cut. If you mm. did mistake, but still, mm. it's like a big movie, it's a big competition, you, you don't have time for mistake. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you, 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 you can uh, walk through some fight scenes, but uh, you have to be in very, very good condition. You have to be done, uh, everything is so very well. Because it's big yeah. production. Yeah. You, 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 you don't have time for mistakes. I mean, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> you've, you've already worked with some incredible people and great projects. Like, uh, one thing I really, really marked out for was I'm a big fan of John Wick. John Wick's one of my favorite films of all time. And when I saw yeah, you yeah. in John Wick 2, you know, the, the, the Russian thug who was beating the crap out of John Wick, I was. 
I was so happy. I was like, "That's." I'm sure that's Vladimir Kozlov. And I looked and it was. So what was it like <laughs> working with Keanu Reeves, who also is one of my favorite actors of all time? That must have been incredible. Yeah, I got so lucky because when I signed for this uh, project, uh, I flew to New York with Keanu and all the stunt group and we work on uh, those fight scenes, I think like two, three weeks together, just uh, feel each other. He's a very nice guy, very, very nice guy, yeah. open mind, he is very helpful. Anytime if you have question about uh, something, he will explain you, but he, is, he was training so hard, like mm. every day. He was taking judo, jiu-jitsu, combat uh, classes, and after he can... Did you see how uh, Ken Reeves can carry guns, shotguns, rifles? It's un unbelievable, incredible. Yeah, he learned it all, didn't he, himself? Everything, like... everything what he is doing, he is doing for 100%. That's crazy. Perfect. Yep. Wow. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Wow, that's impressive. I'm telling you, he's a real deal. He can fight, he can throw, he can take down, submission, shoot, throw knives. Yeah, he is unbelievable. He's he a has badass. No unbelievable skills. <laughs> badass, 100%. <laughs> Plus, I'm telling you, his endurance, it's incredible. He will stay in a movie set like 10, 12 hours nonstop. But He's... don't forget, you have to fight. Plus, you have to remember all your lines. You have to deliver. You have to be fresh, yes. I He's a very hard-working work, guy, very hard-working guy. And I don't and think he people, has a big heart. People don't mm. realize he's actually in his 50s as well, and he's still doing yes, all of this. Like, that's crazy. He has, a, he has a passion for this business. Yeah, he does. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, I also, I'd never seen John Wick. It was Callum that got me into it, and I watched all three of them. I was like, these are the greatest films I've ever seen. Yeah. To me, Keanu Reeves was Bill and Ted. <laughs> so to see him... As John Wick, it was like, this is amazing. I, yeah. This is incredible. Um, and I but, good, saw him... but good news, I didn't get killed in the second one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they still keep going. <laughs> Director said, okay, let's save Oleg <laughs> for the future. That's <laughs> he did good. very well. He said, how do you just roll Keanu Reeves? I said, uh, he said, it's, uh, without wire. I said, I know some uh, tricks. <laughs> 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 well, the other one I wanted to ask you as well is uh, obviously the uh, 25th hour, um, Spike Lee. You had a little bit in that. I mean, did you get to st uh, spend much time around Spike Lee? What was it like working with him? Uh, it was a fast. Uh, I think it was when I competed in New York and the uh, agent came and said, can you be involved in this movie? So that's why I got my Screen Actors Get Union course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got lucky, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good time. Was, uh, yeah. I met uh, uh, Edward Norton. He's a good actor. Yeah. I think he's, he's coming back right now for big uh, sequel, for some big movie. Yeah, because I think uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman was in it as well, wasn't he? As well, um, I think, yeah. It was Ed Norton and Philip Seymour Hoffman, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're doing another big movie. Oh, fantastic. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye out for that, but... Um, I have to ask you as well, because I'm a very big fan of alcohol. I mean, the Moscow Mall of Vodka. Um, oh, it's, it's a good product. You will be surprised <laughs> when it will come to the market. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to be shipping worldwide as well? Will we get it over here in the UK? Yes, yes awesome. it's going to be worldwide. Uh, during COVID, uh, we finished this uh, idea, because I got this idea for a while and I didn't have the time because I was involved in uh, movies, production, I produced a couple of my projects. And during the COVID, because all the uh, production uh, was shut down, we finished this bottle, we finished design, we create a recipe. Basically, we finished everything. So we will la launch soon this product. It's badass. Nine times distill, five times filter. It's from wheat from Ukraine. It's awesome product. It's good. Well, I'll be buying. <laughs> and it, I'll and be it's buying big, and big bottles. One one liter seventy five. Ah. <laughs> Super magnum. 
<laughs> now you're talking my language, Oleg. Now we're now we're talking. I'll be buying a bottle of <laughs> well, we, we will drink together. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised. <laughs> so nice and smooth, so can go over next day. <laughs> and have it with a, a cigar by any chance, because I know you like your cigars as well. Yeah, I'm a worldwide ambassador for Gekka. one of the biggest Gurkha company, cigars company Gurkha. Yeah, mm-hmm. we we become good friends, and uh, I promote his product worldwide. It's so it's very good product because I think it's number one company right now in the world. Oh wow! I've got to be honest. Yeah, like, it's a big I, one. Yeah. When I was researching you recently, like it, actually, this was like last year. You know, when you just think, I wonder what a wrestler is doing these days. Like, I wanted to just see what Vladimir Kozlov was doing. And I remember seeing like this picture of you in a suit and with a cigar, with some whiskey or vodka or whatever. And I just remember thinking, okay. how have you become so badass over that amount of time? Like, you've got this beard, you're absolutely jacked. You've got a cigar company and a vodka company. It's like, how, how did this all come about? Like, what was the change? Do you know what? When I, since I left WWE, one day I wake up, I said, I have to do something. I need to change lifestyle. I have to change my look. And I need fresh start. And yeah. I start to just work on myself. I start diet. I start to train. I change my look. I become more social. And uh, when you open to the world, world give you some opportunities. Be nice yeah. to people, people will be nice to you. <laughs> That's, That's true. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Very yep. true. Very true. And and I've got to be honest with you as well. I mean, you, you've won the award for the, the most handsome guest we've ever had as well. So, I mean, yeah. well done on that. <laughs> I'm, the most, I'm the most jacked as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. We all, every, we should all have a beard, man. I mean, that's, that's badass, that beard alone. So, I mean, no, but I'm telling you, it's so funny. When, when I wrestle, my beard never grow. Never. Really? <laughs> when, I stopped, when I stopped to wrestle, and I was thinking, okay, I need to change my character for the movie because I'm doing military movie. And for some reason, after one month, two months, it's changed. <laughs> it started to grow weird. like a crazy. I think it's coming from your mind. <laughs> yeah. So you just thought about growing a beard and then it came. <laughs> That's so weird. But it's, it's natural <laughs> came like that. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. I mean, Plus it's dark. <laughs> so in, right now in Miami, everybody can see their own Spanish, from Spanish community, Cuban, <laughs> Puerto Rican. <laughs> I mean, maybe you couldn't grow the beard. I mean, was maybe it was the stress of working for Vince McMahon. I mean, I don't know what it's like to wear for Vince, but I can imagine. I can imagine he's very full on. So, no, you are. No, we were in a good uh, relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Miami, though, uh, I did see that he was in a film called Miami Heat, where you started. Yes, yes. What was? How was that? Because you were the actual lead role in that film, wasn't you? Yeah, I produced and I uh, got the lead role. And we started to shoot uh, this movie before before COVID. Yeah. And uh, COVID shut down all production. But uh, we had a little bit issue with uh, continue this finish this project. And yeah. we finish it. And right now, I feel, I, uh, we will release this Christmas time. This oh, Christmas, Christmas time. It's like uh, yeah, Christmas time. Awesome. It's it's like diet uh, diet uh, hard style. It's like taking oh. meat, like uh, bad boys Miami style movie. Yeah. It's a former uh, Spetsnaz agent try to save his daughter who has been kidnapped during a fashion show in Miami. It's against human trafficking. It's action non-stop, like 90 minutes. In this movie, uh, I got a lead part. And the same, uh, basically, I done uh, all stunts uh, by myself. Wow, awesome. Uh, we'll be looking out for that then, because uh, obviously it'd be good to support you anyway in the film that you're in. But it also looked really good, because I saw the, uh, the poster for it when I was researching. And even from the poster, I get that bad boys vibe about it, you know, like a taken bad boys kind of thing. So I'm sold already. I think it looks great. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing a trailer when that comes out. I will send it to you. I have a trailer. Awesome. Because we, <laughs> we represent on Berlin, we represent on Cannes. We got good responses. 
for first my movie I think I did good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it can be better, but COVID is I have excuses. <laughs> Oh man, you are doing some seriously good stuff, honestly. Yeah. We're, we're just thrilled that you gave us your time. But um, b- before we do start to wrap up as well and let you uh, enjoy that Miami lovely weather, um, is there is there a, ever a potential return to wrestling? I mean, is, is would that be uh, ever ruled out? It's possible, it's possible, because wrestling is getting big right now on the Russian market. It's extremely right. huge. So uh, that's why I just uh, done first uh, Russian language peer review for Impact Rebellion. Yeah. Yes, yes, I was going to ask so, you about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, I was talking about uh, my distribution for my movie and the same mm. company, European uh, based, same, it's like investment group, same advisory. Yeah. And uh, they helped me for distribution, uh, my project, and they said, uh, Oleg, because we work on uh, probably for some promotional material, maybe we'll work, we'll work with one of the biggest uh, video platform in Russia, YouTube. And it's first time when they're doing a uh, live peer preview. Mm-hmm. It can be uh, like a commentator, I said, of course I will. Because they, they said you still have a big name in the uh, Russian wrestling community. So the, they're still interested in what you're doing, stuff like that. I said, sure, we did peer review and peer review become one of the biggest. Mm-hmm. What I feel like in the future, if I have opportunity to join uh, wrestling and start to wrestle again, but combined with the movies, because I spent yeah. so, so much time and energy become like an uh, actor and stunt producer. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to give up this part. <laughs> yeah, it's understandable. Easy. It's yeah. not easy either. <laughs> That's it. I think you're at that level now where you could pick and choose if you wanted to come back for a, a match or something. You could do that, couldn't you? Instead of coming back full time. Yeah, uh, hopefully. If I will do uh, part time, why not? Because I'm still in good shape. I'm trained all the time for my project. I'm still taking jiu-jitsu, judo classes. I'm in a great condition because uh, when you're doing a movie, plus, like I said before, I'm doing all my stunt by myself. Yeah. You have to be look great and you have to be in good condition because sometimes fight scenes, you can walk through like maybe 20, 30 times from different angles. You have to be yeah. in very good condition. It's like six, seven, eight hours nonstop. <laughs> My God, I couldn't. I God, I couldn't do six to eight minutes. Never mind six to yeah, eight same. hours, man. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's <can>. very true. <laughs> but yeah. man, obviously, yeah, you need to have passion for what are you doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, man. That's it. And we'd love to see you back. I mean, we're following your creeps. We're big fans anyway. But we we'd love to see you back in the ring someday as well. Because, like I said, we're huge fans, man, and we follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Um. We really do. I'm telling you right now. Right now, I feel like I'm in better condition than uh, since I left WWE. Plus, my skills is getting better and better. Yeah, that's good. That's good to yeah. know. Based on, based on movies, because uh, I was taking so many different classes. I was uh, passed all these different techniques, all these tricks. I think if I go back to wrestle, I can show something unusual again. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed, man. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It all, <laughs> depends. it all depends. Oh, man. Well, we can't thank you enough. Like, it's been an absolute pleasure. We really appreciate your time. I will be buying some of that vodka as soon as I can get my hands on it as well. I'm telling you, I will send it to you. We can drink together. <laughs> I'm awesome, man. Down with that. Absolutely. Any, any time, my friend. Any time. But we'd love to get you back on as well in the future. Maybe when there's, there's more projects coming out, we could do a, another little chat again if you'd be interested. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Awesome, oh, thank man. you very much. Well, Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.